there must be some, you know, it must be a, some closed circuit between when you're sticking your fingers between those two, those two points of the battery. I tried that. He asked there were some batteries in, in the lab. We did. I was actually trying. I couldn't get any. Reach. I'm not quite sure if it was because of me or because of the batteries. Okay, well, let's move on. Let's go on to question two. Name one difference between a chemical reaction and a nuclear reaction. So are you guys doing this? In chemical, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there's eight letters in chemical. Whereas in nuclear, there's one, two, three, four, five, there's only seven letters in nuclear, so that's just one difference. And one starts with C. Yeah, one starts with C, one's the other. Does that count? Yeah, if you, if you wrote that answer down well, I wouldn't give you any credit. <laughs> So, uh, any difference between the well, okay. The chemical reactions are like at the molecular level involving electrons. Mm -hmm. Where the nuclear reaction involves the nucleus. Yeah, the nucleus of the atom. Okay, so remember we were talking about the about those four forces in the universe. The force which holds together the protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom is called the. Yeah, remember, do you guys talk about that in physics? The force forces in the universe, there's, there's, let's see, there's gravity, and then there's the electromagnetic force, and then the force which holds together protons and neutrons in the nucleus is called the strong nuclear force. And then the last force is the yeah, we, if there's something strong, we've got to need something. So this is more, this is more just science trivia more than anything else. Yeah, so I guess the strong nuclear force which holds together the protons, neutrons, and nucleus. So there's a lot of energy released when uh, something happens in the nucleus of an atom. Okay, now. Name two types of particle radiation. Now, there's two types of radiation. One type is particle. What's the other type of radiation? The electromagnetic radiation. So we talked about electromagnetic radiation, chem 1A. So can you name two types of particle radiation? Yeah, one is alpha particles, the other is beta particles. Okay. So let's talk about this question here. So actually, let me go back um, to... This slide here, it was this slide here, so there are various sources of radiation. One is natural background radiation, so natural, we're exposed to 130 milligrams per year of natural background radiation. Part of the natural background radiation is external, the other part is internal, so the internal sources of radiation are are the sources of radiation within our body. The external source of radiation from natural background radiation, those would be from rocks and minerals. For example, there's uranium in rocks and minerals, and that would be one source of external radiation. So we're going to talk about the internal source of radiation. And this is potassium 40. So in a 70 kilogram human, now I know in this country we look at pounds rather than kilograms, so let's see. 70 kilograms is equal to how many pounds? About 100 and... There you go. There you go. So just so we're all on the same page here, we'll count the... 160 pounds? Okay. That close? <laughs> Is it the conversion 2.2 pounds per kilogram? 160. Okay, 160 pounds. So in a 160 pound human, there is 140 grams of potassium. A very small amount of this potassium is radioactive potassium 40. So remember when we look at, at elements, 
we looked at the atomic weight. The atomic weight is the average of all the mass numbers for the isotopes of that element. So if you look at potassium, if we look at potassium, the <laughs> uh, do you know any foods which are a source of potassium? Yes. 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 So, yeah, you can eat a banana a day. <laughs> what's the most abundant isotope of what's the most abundant isotope of uh, potassium? So we can look at, figure that out from the periodic table. So let's see, potassium, what's the, what's the number, what's the atomic weight of potassium? 39, okay, so the most abundant isotope has a mass of 39. Okay, so this is the most abundant isotope. Now the radioactive isotope of potassium is, has a mass number of 40. So it turns out of that 140 gram, a small amount of it is potassium 40. It says that the relative abundance of potassium 40 of all the potassium is 0.012%. So there's not much potassium 40. And then it says potassium 40 is a beta emitter with a half life of 1.28 billion years. And then it says the mass destroyed per, per potassium-40 nucleus, which disintegrates or undergoes radioactive decay, is 2.822 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, so let's answer question A. By the balanced nuclear equation that shows the radioactive decay of potassium 40, what is the order of this reaction? And for that matter, any radioactive reaction. Okay, so we did this, we did this balance equation in lab last week. So to do this, we have potassium 40. So this is the mass number, this number 19 is the the atomic number. So we know that this is a data emitter, so a data particle is represented by what nuclide symbol? Okay, so E and then zero minus one. So the other product, they call it the daughter of the radioactive decay as opposed to the sun. Okay, so calcium. And then this would be 40, 40 and you know it's calcium because the atomic number is calcium 20. Okay. So there's our, our balanced nuclear equation. Now again, it says here that when one potassium 40 nucleus undergoes radioactive decay, two point, the mass is destroyed, so I'll call this delta M. M for mass is two point. 822 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So, what does this mean? Yeah, so mass is lost, but how do we use that information? Now remember in Chem 1A, there was that conservation law. Conservation of mass says that matter is neither created nor destroyed. That does not apply to a nuclear reactions. Because when mass is destroyed, what is produced? Energy. Okay, so we can use this equation this is probably the most famous equation E equals mc squared to figure out the energy produced when this amount of mass is destroyed. Okay, so 
we're going we're gonna to calculate the, let's see here. We want to calculate the radiation exposure in milligrams per year of potassium-40. But before we do that, let's calculate the number of potassium-40 nuclei in a 70 kilogram human. So how do we do that for part B? Okay, so given the information, let's see, we need a 70 kilogram human, there's 140 grams of potassium. So based on that information there, can we figure out the number of potassium 40 nuclei? And Okay, yeah, so this, for part B, this is just a conversion. So based on the mass, remember way back in Chem 1A, chemists like to measure mass because based on mass they can figure out the number of atoms or molecules of a substance that is moles. Okay, so how would you figure out the number of potassium-40 nuclei in a 70 kilogram human? So how would you do that calculation for Okay, so there is 140, I'll get you started, there's 140 grams of potassium. And then our, our conversion. Yeah, so let's convert the moles. So what's the uh, molar mass of potassium? Yeah, let's use 39 because see that's the most abundant isotope. So although, see if we use 40, there's only 0.012% of potassium 40, so we'll use 39. Okay, so there's 39 grams per mole. So this gives us the moles of potassium. What do we do next? Okay, yeah, so let's multiply by Bob Geiger's number. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd nuclei per mole. So this gives us the number, the total number of potassium nuclei in 140 grams. Now we want to figure out how much potassium 40, so we can take that number of nuclei and and convert that to figure out how many potassium 40 nuclei there are. So once we get to here, we can multiply by the zero, zero, zero. Yeah. So like Jeff said, the 0 0.012 percent or the point. 0, 0, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.012 divided by 100. Okay. And I think if we do, we need to do anything else? Okay, so how many potassium 40 nuclei are present in? Say that again, Bill. 2.59 times 10 to the 21. So this is going to be 2.59 times 10 to the 21. Potassium 40 nuclei. Okay, let's go into part C. So in part C, we want to figure out the radiation explosion in milligrams per year. So how much radiation are we being exposed to by having all this potassium in our body. Now, note that potassium-40 is a beta emitter. We know what the half-life is. So the half-life is 
1.28 billion years. So let's see, T1 half. Now, from the half-life, what information can we get about the rate? Yeah, so from here we can calculate the rate constant k. Okay. And then from the rate constant k, can we figure out the rate of the reaction? That is, how many potassium-40 nuclei disintegrate in a certain period of time? Okay, so based on this, then we can figure out the, we'll call it the rate or the activity. So that's going to be the change in the number of moles of potassium-40 nuclei. Okay, so this is the number of potassium-40 nuclei which is integrated in a certain period of time. That's equal to the rate constant K times N, where N is the total number of potassium-40 nuclei. It's uh, 10 to the 20, not 21. I made a mistake. 